What's up, sneakerheads? Wolf of Wall Sneak here, and here is Wall Sneak Journal's five new things in footwear. DTLR and New Balance come together for a beautiful 992 model that encourages wearers to discover and celebrate the DC area. The black and gray suede works perfectly with those hints of red that accent the DC flag on the heel. I'm a little bit biased because I'm from the area, but that also makes me a good judge of this collab. Now, if you're from the DMV area, then you already know we're no stranger to New Balance, especially the 992. Dating all the way back to the 90s, we're pretty known for putting down a good pair of New Balance. So naturally, I had to try to grab them. Sadly, struck out twice. Now, if you were lucky enough to grab this collab, I hate you, but congratulations. In other retail news, bad news if you're a fan of foot action. Foot Locker is set to close all of their foot action stores within the next couple years. After reporting very strong Q1 earnings for this year, Foot Locker is looking to mm, move in a different direction. The 80% surge in comps and increase in their share prices means that they're doing pretty well. What Foot Locker is looking to do now is move in a little bit more strategic direction that's more suited to the post-COVID marketplace and put more juice behind their digital effort to reach consumers. House of Hoops stays. Speaking of hoops, for all my NBA fans out there, hope you've been catching the playoffs. After a disappointing game one loss to the Memphis Grizzlies, Utah Jazz star Donovan Mitchell comes back after an ankle injury and kills it in these brand new Adidas D.O.N. issue number three. This is Donovan Mitchell's third installment of his signature sneaker with Adidas. I'm really not an Adidas basketball fan, but I have to say, not bad. Wish I could say the same for Trey Young, who is absolutely killing it in his playoff debut. I mean, he is putting on a clinic, but his new signature sneaker, the Adidas Trey Young One, looks a little bit too similar to the James Harden's. Is it just me? The future of the NBA looks to be in great hands with its new young superstars. But with the creative acumen that Adidas possesses, I'm really hoping for more innovative basketball models for its superstar athletes. Still sticking with basketball, if you got a chance to check out Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics go head to head with the Brooklyn Nets and their big three, then you probably got a chance to check out Air Jordan's newest model, the 36. Jason Tatum is another young superstar who is absolutely killing the league right now and is showcasing why he's one of the NBA's most prolific scorers on the biggest stage right now. Our first look at the 36 comes in a kind of fuchsia, purple, magenta kind of colorway in the upper, but still shows some of the same qualities and design characteristics that we saw in the 35. What I actually like most of all is that the shoe was originally leaked by 2021 WNBA draftee Satu Sabali. Hopefully this means more marketing looks for the women on the Jordan roster. Don't women like footwear just as much as guys do? Yes. Meanwhile, it has been a long time coming, 10 years to be exact, since the Miami Knights LeBron 8 V2 Low has been seen on feet. Now, after a decade, the coveted shoe is retroing this year, very, very soon. Once again, my bias is showing because I was in Miami at the time these shoes dropped. Now, I didn't get a chance to actually get them, but I did get the preheats, which are also retroing this year. It's no secret, at least in my mind, that the LeBron 8 to this day is still one of the best models he's ever had. So I can see why Nike would want to retro those first. If you plan on copping, good luck. And hopefully you don't strike out like I did with those 992s. Those are your five new things in footwear. Take care and I'll see you for the next five.